Hello and welcome to your tarot forecast for the Scorpio New Moon 2021. So for today's Scorpio New Moon, we will be pulling four oracle cards for the general collective, one from the Total Betty Goddess deck, a deck of my creation, available at michellesheawalker.com, and three from the Sassy She Oracle deck, which is by Lisa Lister, who is a Scorpio herself, so it felt like a fitting card addition for this reading. After those four cards are pulled, I'm gonna pull a few more cards from the Holly Simple Tarot to give us a preview of what the extended reading is gonna be about, and then the extended reading with 10 more cards is gonna be available over at patreon.com backslash Michelle Shea for the full-time fortune tellers. So if the oracle cards and the preview resonate with you, it means the extended reading is definitely for you as well. And you might wanna think about joining that community. If you do access the full-time fortune teller level, you also get access to my monthly tarot scopes, which just have a fresh one up for the month of November. You get weekly pick a card readings, you get audio podcasts, and you get the extended readings for the new and the full moon, as well as access to the live full moon tarot event. So if any of that sounds good, or again, if you want to know more about this particular reading, feel free to head over to michellesheawalker.com backslash michellesha, or if you just want to support what goes on here, membership starts at $3, and that really helps to facilitate a lot more offerings for the general collective. So without further ado, we'll be diving in with our first card from the Total Betty Goddess deck. If you're unfamiliar, this deck is a deck of 90s icons playing the traditional goddesses. I created it because I couldn't find a goddess deck that really felt like it resonated with my modern and colorful style, so I made one. So our total Betty for the Scorpio New Moon is... So I'm going to use a YouTube pronunciation video to help me introduce this goddess. played by 90s RuPaul. So this goddess is one of my favorites in the deck, and for a long time, they weren't coming up in any readings that I was pulling. I've had this deck for over a year now, and they there is not a lot of times that this goddess is present in the readings that I pull for myself or for others. And in one way, it's a blessing because that is a very hard to pronounce name, but I also think that it's super special whenever they do present themselves because it means that it is definitely a very potent energy that's happening right now. And this goddess is basically the combination of two Hindu gods. So a Hindu goddess and a Hindu god merged into one. And that's the reason the name is so hard to pronounce because it's two names blended. And that is also why it's such a special goddess because it is actually the divine feminine and the divine masculine unified into one being. So when this card does come up, it's often a message of not looking outside of yourself for external validation and instead finding a complete being within you. So particularly if you're someone that's been searching for trying to manifest a romantic partner and getting a little needy in those manifestations, this is a really great card and a really great goddess guide to remind you that you actually have everything you need within you. So I am a huge, huge nerd for any type of relationship psychology, and one of my favorite books is Getting the Love You Want slash Keeping the Love You Find, depending on if you're reading the couples version or the singles version. And it is co-authored by Harville Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt, who have spent their lives really doing research on the way that relationships are supposed to work in a healthy way. So basically, one of the core concepts behind this is that we are often attracted to partners who have parts of ourselves that we want internally, that we are craving. So a lot of times this stems from societal expectations. So if it is a male-female situation, the female has a traditional feminine role and the male has a traditionally male role. And oftentimes both partners feel that they actually do want a little bit of that other side because none of us is ultimately just feminine or masculine. We are always supposed to be a little bit of both. So if we are blocking one of those sides of ourselves, we are blocking a part of our true self and our part of our authentic nature. And so sometimes that 
can manifest in a codependent way when we meet someone that has these qualities and think, whew, now I don't have to integrate these things within myself. I can just find it in my other partner. My partner completes me. I complete my partner. And everything's hunky-dory, except it's not because that's codependency and that's not healthy. It's not a healthy pressure to put on your partner to be your other half, to complete you. So ultimately, the lesson from this is that we are supposed to approach our romantic relationships as if they are a learning ground or a search mechanism for what it is that we're trying to integrate within ourselves. So when you find that sort of like electric light up when you're attracted to a quality within someone else that you don't possess within yourself, it's not supposed to be that you then possess your partner and you possess that quality through them. It's supposed to be that you then try to integrate that to figure out how you can make that part of your own being and your own qualities in your own way and then through that if both partners are doing that and going about the relationship with that mindset then you let the other person off the hook and you start to become more complete within yourself and the relationship itself starts to become healthier in general so that is a lot of a message coming from this one card and I have a feeling that we're probably gonna have a little more of a romantic based reading so moving forward I'm gonna move into our other three Oracle cards for the general collective again these are the sassy she cards from Lisa Lister if you're not familiar with Lisa Lister I highly recommend you check her out not only for her card decks but also for her amazing books and again big Scorpio energy. So we're going to see what these cards have to say about the Scorpio new moon and how to clarify our goddess card. So we have past of sacred, present, priestess, and future truth. This is big energy. Um, obviously we're using goddess cards and we're using a sassy she deck. So there's a lot of divine feminine present within this reading, but even these cards themselves point to a very divine feminine energy. We have sacred, we have priestess, we have truth. And sacred and priestess in particular kind of embody the idea of the divine feminine. So if you're not familiar, the concepts of divine feminine versus divine masculine, first of all, have nothing to do with gender. You can be a male gender and be mostly divine feminine. You can be a female gender and be mostly divine masculine. You cannot assign yourself any gender and have one or the other stronger and it's basically about trying to balance them out and that's the ultimate goal because the divine masculine is what we see a lot in our modern society is the more acceptable way of being it is the action base the planner the boss energy the big picture seer and it's very forward moving but also a little bit harsher it's almost like a sledgehammer energy and then it's like okay I've got this goal and I'm just gonna power through until I get to it. Whereas the divine feminine energy is kind of the energy that you have to have before you find that power through. It's the energy of receptivity. So the divine feminine is more about stillness and meditation and waiting for the inspiration to arrive. So we need both of these things. If you are all divine masculine, or sometimes these qualities show up in less divine ways, so if you're all masculine energy, you can power into something that actually isn't meant for you or that wasn't a good idea to begin with. Or if you're all feminine energy, you can sit around just waiting for something to happen to you all the time without taking any action. So that's why we need to integrate both parts of these things because that's how we find balance and that's how we find aligned action within our lives because we wait for the inspiration and then move forward. So we're coming in from this previous energy of sacred, of pointing to the fact that we actually have had this period of time that we've reconnected to some sort of spiritual connection within our lives. And I think honestly, the, the vibe I'm getting from this card in the current moment is that the sacred is coming through almost out of this like emotional necessity. Like we hit a we hit a place of 
rock bottom. We hit a place of burnout and we had to reach for something greater than ourselves. And that's kind of, you know, a hard way to go about the lesson, but it's a beautiful moment whenever you're like, okay, I'm at rock bottom with whatever it is. Maybe it's with love addiction. Maybe it's with a financial circumstance. Maybe it's an emotional rock bottom. And when you hit that rock bottom, what ultimately happens is it gives you a surface to push off of. It gives you the knowledge that you can't go any further so that you can then try and get your way back up. Or I like to think of it as the bottom of the pool rather than a rock bottom. When you hit the bottom of the pool, you're not going to sink any further and you actually can use that leverage of hitting rock bottom to push back up to the surface. So that's kind of what I'm feeling from this sacred card is that whatever spirituality we've found in the recent past has come from this deep place of emotional necessity because we had to find something to pull us back up. We had to find that momentum to get up to the surface of the pool. So that's beautiful, but it also is a little bit unstable or a little bit fragile. So our spiritual connection that we're coming through in the past is definitely very important, but we need to make sure that we really solidify it in this moment. And that's why the priestess energy is coming in for this new moon, because we're coming from this place of almost like a needy spirituality. And now we're being called to kind of bring it into this place of embodiment of the spirituality, of really letting ourselves feel calm and centered within that divine feminine receptivity rather than having it be this moment of just dropping to your knees in prayer because you have absolutely no other option we're now being asked to integrate this feeling of being connected to something bigger than ourselves of being connected to our spirituality and to our inner voice on a daily regular basis so this takes a spiritual routine a regular spiritual practice so if you take nothing else away from this reading, the way that you are integrating these divine feminine and divine masculine energies within yourself is by cultivating a daily practice. And that can mean a lot of things for different people. Whatever makes you feel connected to your inner voice and to your spirituality is perfect. I really like to recommend meditation. And if you are even somewhat called to trying it out and it's not a part of your practice, I recommend that you do. Set a timer for 20 minutes put on some relaxing music and just sit and see what comes up. A lot of people think that meditation is supposed to be that you absolutely don't have any thoughts. And that's not really necessarily true. And some practices that might sort of be true, but even in those practices where you are, where your intention is that you are clearing your mind, the intention of clearing your mind is so that the super clear thoughts can come to the surface. So you're really clearing your mind of like the unnecessary monkey mind stuff that's just there cluttering up and fogging up the message. So the priestess energy is really coming in with, hey, even if you sit down for just five minutes a day with the intention that you're not going to think about what to do next, then maybe something will come forward. And if it doesn't, at least you've taken that five to 20 minutes a day to give your mind a break. And even if you just find two seconds of mental stillness during those 20 minutes, you've accomplished something really, really grand. So make it your intention to just sit down. Sit down in whatever sacred spot that you've created for yourself and meditate or journal or pull some cards for yourself or just ask a question and sit and see if something comes forward. Because it's gonna be the regular practice that allows it to become easier over time. And don't go in with a lot of expectations. Again, the goal here is just to give your mind a break. If something brilliant comes forward during that time, awesome. But if not, you're still creating a really powerful wellness routine. It's like flossing for your brain. It's just something that you're gonna do on a daily basis to make sure that you don't have a bunch of buildup. And over time, you will definitely see results, whether that be huge results or minor results, it's still gonna keep things healthier within your mental capacity. And then our future card is the truth which means that through that stillness and that spiritual practice, we're gonna tap into more clarity. And the thing I love about this card in regards to our divine feminine and divine masculine conversation is she definitely is embodying a little more active 
divine masculine energy. So truth is really where we're going to be able to take what we've found in stillness and take what we've learned from that divine feminine within us and start to embody that divine masculine, but embody it from a place of truth and go about this action from a really authentic place. So with that in mind, I'm going to pull just two cards as a little tarot preview to what's to come in the rest of this extended reading. So again, we have the Holly Simple Tarot. I'm going to pull energy and advice to kind of see where we're headed. So our energy is the Six of Wands and the advice is the Seven of Swords. So right away, I'm getting this feeling of there is like a triumph. There's a, a recognition of effort that's coming in, but there's also a secret being kept. So in regards to that divine feminine, divine masculine connection here, I'm getting that there is potential to be meeting these balancing energies, to be meeting these people that show us who it is that we actually want to embody more of. But there's going to be secrets on both sides. And I think the secrets on both sides are ultimately that our society has trained us to look for the other person as our other half. And we're trying to get over that mental mindset. So basically we really are looking at a codependency healing reading that's coming up. So if you find that you have found yourself in relationships in the past where you are super codependent and you are looking to the other person to complete you, if you have any tendencies for love addiction and you find that when a relationship ends, you feel like you've lost like half of your body or a limb, I fully feel you. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about because it is something that I am an active healing from and it's been a several year journey. So I am going to dive more into establishing healthier patterns in the next relationship connection that you have so that you can help to avoid those codependent things that have been coming up in your past and therefore start to recognize the other person as the mirror back to you to what you're trying to integrate rather than putting the pressure on them to complete you. So if all of that resonated, it's going to be a specific reading for you and it's going to happen over on the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Michelle Shea, full-time fortune teller level. And if you are on the Patreon on that level, the rest of this reading starts right now.